This is a video for Finance 438, Management of Financial Institutions at California State University, Northridge, and I'm Jim Dow. In this video, we are reviewing Chapter 1 of the text, Commercial Bank Operations. Chapter 13 covers the operations of commercial banks. This chapter is at the core of the course, and so we will go through it in some detail. We'll follow the chapter closely starting with an overview of what banks do and how banks are structured, and some recent banking history. Then we'll look at the bank balance sheet and the sources and uses of funds. We'll talk about some basics of loan interest rates, and finally, look at some measures of bank profitability. Banks do a number of things. We saw in the first part of the course that banks are one type of financial intermediary. They connect the suppliers of funds with the demanders of funds. They do this by taking in money from the suppliers of funds as deposits. These deposits are liabilities for the bank as they represent money that the bank owes the depositors. The bank can then lend the money to the demanders of funds, the borrowers, and those loans are assets for the bank. While banks have other assets and liabilities, for most banks, taking deposits and making loans is their primary activity and we will spend a lot of time thinking about how banks do this. What else do banks do? Banks are part of the transaction system. They process checks and provide access to cash. Banks can buy and sell securities. Banks can provide financial advice and wealth management services to individuals. This includes not only deposits, but other financial products such as mutual funds and insurance. It turns out that what we commonly think of a as a bank covers several different kinds of institutions. Some institutions look like banks but are not formally called banks, and other institutions are called banks but might not take deposits or make loans. We need to distinguish between these different institutions both by what they do and how they are regulated. When most people talk about a bank, they think about an institution like the one we discussed in the last slide one that takes deposits and makes loans. Our name for this kind of institution is a commercial bank. Because of the way the regulatory structure is set up in the United States, there are two other categories of institutions that do the same. Savings banks, sometimes called thrifts, and credit unions. In a later lecture, we will talk specifically about these institutions, but most of the concepts we develop in this chapter about taking deposits and making loans will also apply to them. Finance companies provide loans, like commercial banks, but they don't take deposits. Investment banks are called banks, but generally do not engage in traditional commercial banking activity, but rather engage in other kinds of financial activity. We use different terms to describe the organizational units of a bank. A bank is the legal entity that is subject to various rules and regulations for banks. A branch is a physical office of a bank that is not a separate legal entity. A bank holding company can have underneath it separately regulated financial entities, such as a commercial bank, an investment bank, and an insurance company. For many reasons, there has historically been stronger restriction on banking in the U.S. than in other countries. In part, this has to do with the distrust of large financial institutions and efforts to reduce the effects of a banking panic. Historically, there were limits on interstate banking and often on the number of branches a bank could have. States played an important role in regulating the banks in their state. After the Great Depression, a number of laws were passed that strictly regulated the banking business, including a separation of commercial banks and investment banks. In recent years, a number of these regulations were reversed. We'll talk more about this in a later video.
For a long time, the number of banks stayed fairly constant. However, with changes in banking laws in the mid-80s, which allowed interstate banking, there were a number of mergers which led to a consolidation in the banking industry. As the size of the nation grew, particularly in the West and the South, the number of branches increased over this time. However, in recent years, we've seen this growth stop, and with the arrival of online banking and phone banking, the number of branches should fall. The majority of banks are fairly small, in this case meaning under $300 million in assets. But most of the assets are held at large banks. The largest banks, each with over $10 billion of assets, make up around 2% of the number of banks but hold 80% of the assets.